Today is patch day, which means it's also time for another tier list video. Today, we're going to break down the low elo tier list for patch 1220. Not too many patches left this year as this season comes to a close though, so you best get grinding for those end of season rewards and bragging rights before it gets too late. To be honest though, there's really not been that many changes this week. Some champions have been buffed, a few champions nerfed, but nothing that's going to really break the game too much. And on that note, without further ado, let's jump straight into the tier list. And of course, we're going to start off with the top lane. In the S tier, we have Singed, Poppy, Shen, Maokai, Sejuani, Mordekaiser, Darius, Olaf, Nasus, and Orn. Yes, still quite a few champions in the S tier in the top lane. Garen and Aatrox do move out of the S tier to the A tier though, and Vladimir and Tom Kench move down from A to B. Trindamir is going to move back up into the B tier and Wukong moves up into the A tier after some buffs this week. Nasus is back with a bang and he's definitely cemented himself as one of the strongest top laners in the game again, especially at low elo. The buffs he got in patch 1219 have really cemented his place back into the meta and he's 100% a lot scarier than he was previously. Nasus has obviously got that late game scaling with those Q stacks. I mean, if he gets 500 stacks, he's probably going to one or two shot your AD carry. But it's not just that which makes him strong. His wither is extremely punishing to play against, especially in certain matchups. And in the late game, if you're playing an AD carry that isn't vain, you're probably not going to be able to kill it. Then you've got his E reducing enemies' resistances, which is really what's making the difference. Now, obviously, as Nasus, if you do get camped, you do get put behind, you're probably not going to be able to scale and really do your thing. But in most games right now, especially towards those lower ranks, Nasus is getting fed. He is scaling and he is is winning a lot of games. Sejuani has just been creeping into popularity patch after patch, and despite not really being changed or buffed or anything, she's actually been one of the best performing champions in the game for quite some time, just flying a little bit under the radar. To be honest, you can play Sejuani in the top or the jungle, but we wanted to talk about her here because that TP Ignite Sejuani Bruiser in the top lane is really hard to beat. She can honestly 1v1 in a lot of different matchups, she can kill you pretty easily and she surprises people with her damage and her CC as well. But it really is that setup CC which is what makes her so strong when it comes to setting up ganks. If you're a jungler, you probably love playing for lanes like Sejuani. All you're going to do is walk up there, and even if you don't have any CC yourself, Sejuani will do it all for you. More CC equals more successful ganks. It's as simple as that. And this allows you to get pretty fed pretty easily. After the lane phase and towards team fights, it's all about using your ultimate on the most important target. Getting stuck into teams, absorbing as much damage as possible, and stunning and damaging as many as you can yourself too. If you enjoy playing tanky CC setup machines, then definitely you should be playing Sejuani right now. Wukong has kind of fallen off the face of the earth recently, so it's about time we saw some compensation buffs. Wukong has had a fantastic season, let's not take anything away from that. I mean, he's been dominant in the top and the jungle ever since his changes back earlier on in the season. But because he was just so strong, he got nerfed a little bit too hard. If you play him in the jungle right now, he's still not too viable, but he's definitely getting his place back in the top lane. Over recent weeks, he's seeing his performance increase slightly, and in combination with this buff, it should put him back into a really good spot. Wukong is pretty good throughout the lane phase, he has consistent kill threat with that Q burst damage, he's got his clone to escape, he's got his E to keep on top of people, and then once he gets his ultimate, he becomes a far more complete champion in general. This ultimate is also fantastic in teamfights too, and a lot of fun to play with. I mean, who doesn't want to be a Beyblade? If you do want to see more about Wukong or any other champion in this video, we have builds, runes, combos, matchups, and counters, and video guides for every single one over on our website. Click the link in the description to check them out. Let's move into the jungle now, and in the god tier, we just have Fiddlesticks. In the S tier though, we have Belveth, Mordekaiser, Udyr, Amumu, Nunu, Volibear, Zac, Echo, and Rammus. Yes, Rammus is going to move back into the S tier this week with those changes, and Shaco and Shivana also move into the A tier. Karthus also moves up into the B tier. So Rammus is one of those champions that's just such a good low elo jungler. He's very easy to play, and he's impossible to play against if you don't know how to beat him. I mean, if he gets fed, he's just going to 1v1 every single AD carry in the game, because if they were to attack him three times, they're going to die to his Stormail and his W. Rammus has had a fairly up and down season. Sometimes he's been absolutely broken with a 53% plus win rate, and sometimes a little bit underwhelming. And over the last few weeks, he's not been doing so great. But we think with these changes, he's going to bounce right back. Rammus is just one of those junglers that no one wants to play against, especially if they main AD carry. His ganks are just just so fantastic with that crowd control. He can also get around the map really quickly as well, and his ultimate is pretty hard to play against. If you do enjoy Ramus, now is a good time to revisit him. After having such a dominant start to the season, Volibear really fell off recently. But the funny thing is, he still got a really good win rate. He was absolutely broken for such a long time, and then a few too many nerfs, and people just thought, oh, sod it, let's not play anymore Volibear. But the thing is, he is still incredibly strong. Everybody knows what Volibear is good at. He's good at ganking, he's good at snowballing, and he's good at diving everyone and everything. This hasn't changed. And yes, he might be a little bit more matchup specific than he was before when you could just pick him into anything and carry anyway, he's still a really good choice. So if you did enjoy Volibear towards the start of the season, here's a reminder that he is still S tier. 
You will definitely all be familiar with Zach though. This guy has been absolutely dominating the jungle for the last few patches. And not just with strong danks and his ability to tank, but actually his sheer amount of damage as well. If you've played Zach or played against a good Zach, you'll already know how strong he is right now. As long as you don't get invaded and you manage to get that balmy cinder without dying, you're probably going to win the game. Zach has insanely good ganks, ridiculously good scaling, fantastic damage, so much CC, and his survivability is absolutely absurd. And by the way, in just a few weeks, he's got a really cool skin coming out. Finally, a good good Zack skin. Yes, you are going to have to wait a few more weeks for that one, but it's still a great time to play Zack. There really is not too many champions in the game that can carry like this man can. Over to the mid lane now, and in the god tier remains Swain and Vex. In the S tier we have Dinah, Zed, Seraphine, Victor and Echo. Yes, Echo is going to move up into the S tier after those recent buffs really proved pivotal for him. Akshan moves down from S to A and Lissandra moves back up into the B tier. Swain is still one of the best mid laners and champions in the game, and I'm not going to bore you by talking about him forever, because I'm sure you guys already know just why this champion is so strong. Swain has a really consistent, really strong lane phase and he can bully so many low range matchups easily. But he also scales into a formidable monster as the game goes on, with that scaling HP passive and his ability to shred entire teams and heal at the same time with his ultimate. Yes, Swain is a massive monumental leech. He walks into a fight, presses R, spams his abilities, presses his Zonyas, and you can't kill him. Partner all of that with his fantastic catch potential and ability to burst down rotating targets easily with just one click, and you've got a really fantastic champion to play right now. One that you definitely haven't seen so much of though is Lissandra. Over the last few weeks she's seen a real improvement in her success rate, and although she can seem fairly easy to play, she's actually a lot more difficult than you may think to actually be impactful on. But if you can play her correctly, you can pick her into the right matchups, you can really shut down certain players in the game, you can carry with this alone. Lissandra actually has quite a few really good traits. If you're ahead, you dive into a team, you press R on yourself, you can't be killed, but you deal a stupid amount of damage to everybody. But if you're behind, you still have a crazy amount of crowd control that you can use to help your team anyway. In low elo, being useful even when you're behind is a fantastic strength to have. And the great thing about Lissandra is if you're against a fed Kastlin or a fed carry, you can shut them down with one click of your ultimate. As long as you play it correctly and you position yourself correctly, you can carry any game even if you're behind by pressing the button at the right time. Then you've also got fantastic wave clear, really good flank potential with your E. She's actually quite hard to gank to because of her E. And she's a really good pick into so many different wombo combo comps. Now she definitely is an S tier and she definitely needs the right matchup and the right draft. But if you enjoy Lissandra, keep playing her. Echo is well and truly back, and for what seemed like some pretty small buffs, they've really sent him over the edge. This guy is winning a lot of games more so than he's probably ever done before. In both the jungle and the mid lane, he's having a fantastic time over the last few weeks. And with no changes, no nerfs this patch, he's going to continue to do so. Being a melee assassin, he does have a fair few difficult matchups, but to be honest, if you play them well enough, you can kill them anyway. And if you do kill them and get a bit fed on this champion, you have a real ability to snowball and carry the game by yourself. Yep, Echo's ability to 1v9 is up there with some of the best in the game right now, mainly due to the sheer amount of burst damage that you deal with your passive, your E and your Q. And the fact that you can do this so risk-free with your ultimate allowing you to get out of there after you kill them so you're never just trading one for one. Echo's ultimate can also be used for massive AoE damage though, I mean that's one of the things they buffed was the damage that this ability does. And due to the slippery nature of this champion, if he does get fed, if you do get fed when playing him, you're going to be so hard to play against, you're going to be so hard to shut down and you're going to be really difficult to beat. Echo definitely does take a bit more practice than some of the other champions we've just spoken about in the mid lane, but if you can pull him off, he is a top mid laner to go for. Well, let's move down into the bot lane now, and a bit of a shift this time around. In the S tier, we have Misfortune, Seraphine, Kaisa, and Twitch. Yep, Kaisa and Twitch move up to the S tier, and Jin and Tristana move down to A. Ziggs also jumps into the A tier with his buffs coming in this week. Ziggs, in my opinion, has been really underrated for quite a while now. I mean, I've been playing a bit of Ziggs harmoning with my friends, and it's absolutely fantastic fun. Seriously, the amount of poke and the ability to take down towers is fantastic, but Ziggs on his own is equally as good. Ziggs is such a safe bet to play in the bot lane, he's a bit like an AP Ezreal. He has poke, he has good escape, he has fantastic tower pushing potential, and he scales really well too. So if you do need an AP pick in that bot lane, Ziggs is definitely one to play, especially with the buffs coming in this week. Absolutely everybody is playing Kaiser at the moment. She's now easily the most popular AD carry in the game, and it feels like every single time you queue up, you're going to be playing with or against one. Kaiser's laning is a lot better than you may think. She has a ton of burst damage, she's got fantastic wave clear, and just a really good ability to all in in the lane phase. But it's not really the main attraction when it comes to Kaiser, because the main thing to think about is her scaling. Kaiser's late game power is without question, but if you do get fed in the early game, which is a lot easier nowadays, then you're going to spike super hard, and you're going to be completely impossible to beat. Once you've got a few items, you've upgraded your Q and your E, you're now much harder to take down and you deal a significant amount more damage as well. And seriously, the amount of burst you can do with this champion is insane. You can 
can dive through teams with your ultimate. You can assassinate squishies. You can kite back with it. There's so many different things you can do with this champion. And right now, she's at the top of her game. So if you haven't tried her yet as an AD carry main, now is a great time to try her. Switch has come back into the S tier, and he only ended up moving out of that tier for two weeks. Yes, after a brief stint of being a little bit more average, he's back with the big boys. Now, we all know just how good Twitch is when he gets fed. There really is not too many AD carries that have his ability to delete entire teams with his ultimate. He can sneak up behind a team with his Q, get a good flank off, and then press R and melt everybody whilst all walking into the sunset. But the thing is about Twitch, not only is he amazing and high healer when you can really maximize his damage, but he's also actually pretty easy to play too. The only thing that is hard about Twitch is his lane phase. It's a little bit underwhelming and you might get a bit put behind early game, but if you don't, it doesn't even matter if you're not that good because you press R, you auto attack a few times and you press your E and watch entire teams melt in seconds. The better you get at Twitch though, the more you're going to be rewarded. And the more you'll understand that there's actually loads more ways to carry with Twitch than there is with any other marksman. His stealth means you can roam around and gank the map whenever you want. And this is such a unique way to carry games from the bot lane. So if you do want to put your teammates on your back and give 1v9ing a go, then learn Twitch. Finally, we have those supports, and since our tier list update last week, we've actually got no changes to add in here. In the god tier, we have Janna and Blitzcrank, and in the S tier, we have Soraka, Maokai, Renata Glask, Amumu, Sona, Nami, and Zillion. Yes, despite those nerfs to Maokai and Blitzcrank, we're going to keep them in the S tier for now because they've just been, well, a little bit broken recently. Talking of broken, if you haven't played Soraka support at the moment, then you're missing out. The Queen of Sustain is winning a hell of a lot of games again at the moment. And as long as you don't int too much in the early game where you are a little bit vulnerable, you're probably going to end up winning. The sheer amount of healing you can pump out in team fights is absolutely bonkers. And yes, you are going to be heavily focused because of this. So you need to stay out the way, be mindful of your positioning, and just keep close enough to heal your teammates without risking getting killed. Now, despite having a vulnerable lane phase though, she's actually really good in lane. She just is a squishy champion. So naturally, if she gets blitz hooked, she's probably going to die. But her Q&E poke and silence, her W's heal, and her ultimate when she gets it are fantastic tools throughout the early game. And not only does this encourage those AD carries to play more aggressively without too much risk, but it also helps scaling hyper carriers get through the lane phase without getting pushed in and punished. If you love the real support healing playstyle, then you definitely shouldn't sleep on Soraka. Zillion is still a fantastic support to go for. Now, he might be a bit more situational than most, but this doesn't take anything away from just how crazy strong this champion can be. In lane, you've got good setup CC with your double bomb, you've got good movement speed and a mini exhaust with your E, but it's really that ultimate which sets you aside from the rest. Even if you don't really do too much in the game, but you're always using that ultimate correctly, then you've got a better chance of winning already. As the game goes on, your utility only gets better though. Your bombs become more frequent, they deal more damage, and your speed ups and your slows with your E can be absolutely pivotal. Honestly, Zillion is kind of like a mini Yumi. He's not quite as obnoxious and you can actually kill him rather than him hiding inside someone, but his utility and his kit is actually quite similar. Therefore, if you do manage to pick him alongside a Kane, a Yudir, a Hecarim, those kind of champions which famously 1v9 with Yumi, you're probably going to have a lot of fun. Leona has really started to cement her place back in the meta after a pretty average season. The durability patch in 12.10 really hurt Leona. But ever since then, she's got a few buffs, some items have been buffed too, and slowly but surely she's made her grand return. Now she's kind of back in that situational support place. If you want to play a really aggressive kill lane, you're against an immobile AD carry, you really just want to punish them and snowball the lane phase, she's a fantastic support again to play. She's got various different mythic items, you can go for Locket for some AoE shields, you can go for Evan Shroud for some more burst, there's loads of different ways you can build and play Leona. But as long as you pick her in the right game, in the right draft, she's actually much more viable than you may think. And if your enemy AD carry didn't take cleanse because they don't respect you and you're good enough on Leona, you can absolutely carry the game on your own. So if you like playing aggressive bot lanes and supports with lots of CC, don't forget about Leona. Well, that's going to wrap up our patch 1220 tier list video for Low Elo. We hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to head on over to our website to check it all out for yourself. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you all in the next one. Take care.